Welcome back, everybody. I'm hanging out with Brian Kibler. And Brian, we've had four amazing days of Hearthstone, but today only four can continue on to BlizzCon and join uh, the other four we had qualify yesterday. So what are your thoughts on this process? I mean, all these players have come a really long way, and you know they don't want to go home now. Even if they lose, they won't go home. They'll be able to go to BlizzCon, but they want to be up on that stage playing. So uh, I, I have to imagine they're going to be giving their all. Yeah, as Kino just said, he's like, I'm here for a week, so I might as well play in the finals. It would be pretty lame to just kind of sit there and watch. I, mean, I can think of a few fun things you might be able to do in California if you weren't able to play on the, the BlizzCon stage, but, you know, I would rather be doing uh, that instead, going to the going and actually playing in the tournament. Yeah, and uh, BlizzCon itself is going to be pretty awesome, and I know it's, uh, it's really hard to get into BlizzCon, really hard to get tickets, but all these players are going to be there. You're going to get a chance to talk to them, uh, get some autographs, and just, just hang out. They're great guys. Have you been hanging out with the players at all, chatting with them? Yeah, um, the players are all really cool. We've been having the opportunity to go out and have dinner with them, uh, you know, be able to, to learn a bit about them outside of just the game. And uh, it'll be really cool to actually spend more time at BlizzCon with them as well. BlizzCon, I've been to quite a few of them all the way back to the very first BlizzCon. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I've been fond of saying this, but the Hearthstone players, especially the ones that, that really put their heart into the game, they come out here and they're incredible people. They're very friendly. I was just talking to Kuno and he said he came out here alone from Japan, but the SEA players are so nice. All the players are so nice that he's found friends and he's a lot more comfortable. I mean, I, I last night, you know, had a long philosophical conversation with Hot Firm, you know, over dinner. Or actually, it was the other night. Last night, I just went to sleep because I'm old and old and boring. But, but no, it's been it's been great to get to know these players uh, even more outside of their play, and they're all a bunch of really great people. Absolutely, you guys can join the conversation on Twitter with the hashtag H. WC 2015 and uh, all the players around there you can chat with them I highly recommend giving them a follow saying hey on social media reaching out to the players you support and uh, giving them some love because they're all putting their their heart and their lives on the line here and uh, they're giving you great games so thanks so much Brian for all your wonderful casting I'm gonna give it back to our casters for the next game versus Life Coach. Welcome back. We see the handshake there between Life Coach and Kranich. Uh, I am Robert Worthenwing, joined at the desk by Savitz and Amaz. Uh, guys, this is obviously a rematch. We had this uh, very early on in our Harson World Championship broadcast, uh, Kranich versus Life Coach. And Kranich had some fun things to say to Life Coach. Obviously, uh, meant very much in fun, but he was jokingly saying that he was a younger, cuter Hearthstone player and he was going to send Life Coach to his retirement. Obviously took the series, but was unable to advance to the top eight. Life Coach has a chance for revenge. Uh, what do you guys expect to see in this series? Well, it's interesting to see that these players have decided to go with different kind of strategies for the tournament. Kranich is playing an aggressive lineup, while Life Coach is going with a slow control one. And uh, I would tend to favor Kranich in this type of situation, but Anything can happen, and uh, something like the da like the handlock from uh, Life Coach can beat any of the decks from Kranich. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Life Coach's uh, handlock is not especially good in this matchup, but if he does win this match against Kranich and goes on to the top eight, this handlock is going to be really strong against other decks. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about uh, Life Coach's lineup. Uh, a lot of players coming into the series uh, had to make, well, obviously all the players had to make specific reads about what they were expecting to see and, and kind of tailor their lineup against, but Life Coach kind of kept to a very Life Coach-centric uh, roster there. We see he's going to open with Handlock, but he brought a bunch of control decks, which did not go aggro at all. And uh, obviously, you know, he's still alive in this tournament and doing well, but he himself said during one of his interviews that he doesn't necessarily feel that he read the meta super correctly. Uh, what do you make of, obviously, Handlock versus uh, Zulox of each? Um, I think it's a, it's a fair matchup for Handlock. And for Life Coach, that Handlock is, the, is a problem against Kranich's lineup in general. The Druid and the Hunter would have been way worse than this is. So if you're Life Coach, you're extremely happy to see see, see this right now. Um, it's not a, like an automatic win or anything like that, but I, I would tend to favor the Handlock. Yeah, um, this is Life Coach's best lineup uh, against Kranich's decks, the uh, Mirror. Uh, even though it is Handlock versus Zoo, uh, the Handlock does have a lot of ways to uh, board clear. But ever since, Zoo Lock includes a lot of Death Rattle creatures, even the Imp Gang boss doesn't die to Hellfire now. Uh, Handlock has a little more struggle against a Zoo Lock, whereas, you know, back in just the classic set, Handlock would just be like the counter because Hellfire and Shuffling just clears out all the board. Yeah, if there's somebody who can do it, it's going to be Life Coach. He's known for his style where he kind of sticks to his same type of strategies from one tournament to another and tries to perfect his gameplay on those particular decks. 
Right. Uh, Amaz, you kind of mentioned the fact that Hellfire these days, uh, as a board clear, is not necessarily as impactful, mm -hmm. because as more sets have come out, obviously we've seen these stickier minions, uh, Piloted Shredder, Haunted Creeper, Nerubian Eggs, these kind of minions that even when you blow them up, they usually leave something behind on the board, and since that area of effect damage only happens once off a spell like Hellfire, yeah. But, but looking at the hand from Kranich right now, Kranich doesn't have any of those sticky minions. Everything that he has in his hand will die to a potential coin hellfire on turn three from Life Coach. Yeah, he did. Uh, Kranich did mulligan off the uh, Nerubian Egg uh, in the hopes to find a more aggressive starting hand like this one, so that uh, you know he can just put a lot of pressure on Life Coach. Maybe Life Coach ca doesn't have his Molten Giants right now, which would be really helpful if the, he can use it with like Sunfury Protector to make a big wall of taunts. But uh, Kranich is going to go for the all-in face, so and then hopefully draws his uh, Doom Guard or Power Woman to end the match before Handlocks can, you know, wrap into those crazy cards. We actually see one of those crazy cards in the hand of Life Coach Malganis, and we see the Void Caller. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we witnessed in the last series. That's an incredibly powerful combination, capable of getting Malganis out there far earlier than turn nine. And Life coach, the classic. <laughs> Life coach is considering his options uh, after an eventful turn uh, decides to pass. Well, I mean, you do have like you know, 75 seconds per turn. You might as well just use them all to like think of the turns ahead, and you don't get penalized for using the whole turn. No. Other, other than you know, perhaps the audience say, "Oh, you're roping," but you know that doesn't matter when you win at the end. Right, and for these turns that are earlier on, you know, when not as much is going on, it's kind of a good time to sit down, look at what you have in your hand, look at what kind of you expect to see based on the first couple of turns of your opponent, and figure out your game plan then. Mm -hmm. Because later on, when you are stuck in more complex turns, you're not necessarily going to have time for a big picture approach to your turns. So, uh, well, it's obviously fun to to kind of. Joke around about Life Coach's turn length. Uh, there is a method to his uh, his rope madness, and it's obviously paid off. He's had an incredible 2015, along with his teammate Ties. Which, fun fact, if he were to win this series, he would advance to play Ties actually in the uh, the round of eight. Yeah, and if we get to that match, I, th I would tend to favor Life Coach heavily against Ties' lineup. That priest is not very good against any of Life Coach's decks. So uh, if they were to play, Life Coach would be in much better position than against Granite. Granich is going to be it's going to be very difficult for him, but looking at this right now, he might he might be able to sneak in that uh, win with the handlock unless Granich picks up a sticky minion for his next turn. Yeah, the Hellfire is looking very, very juicy against Kranich's board, and uh, yeah, Kranich needs to draw something like an M-game boss, perhaps. Or Nerubian Egg, but yeah. no, doesn't oh. get any of that. No matter what Kranich does here, Life Coach is going to be able to get a full clear with his coin Hellfire on next turn. And this is kind of interesting. Uh, going into this turn, you see, obviously, Kranich has the Voidwalker, he has the Abusive Sergeant. He would float a mana if he played both, which obviously doesn't feel good. So maybe there's a Val, or I guess a value to possibly just playing the Voidwalker and tapping, which is what he chooses to do. Obviously, if he plays down the Abusive Sergeant and the Voidwalker, that Hellfire would give it even more impact. Yep, yep that's true. And we see that in-game muscle is just one card away from being played, which is, you know, maybe he can just play it next turn along with another one drop. Hopefully not the Abusive Sergeant. You wanted to do something to turn your play it. And we see uh, Earthen, Ring Sar or Earthen Ring Farseer picked up. Uh, that's a card that we'd mentioned had kind of been cut from a lot of handlock lists. Right. But it's very impactful in this matchup because it's a minion that comes down, it offers a little bit of healing, but more importantly, battles for the board. Yeah, definitely helps to have it early on. Later on in the game, not the greatest top deck, but you always have the, the Warlock Hero Power, which kind of give you additional cards, and Earthen Ring Farseer is easy to play alongside the life tap. Yeah. It, it, Earth Ring Farseer has been cut from a lot of lists because turn 3 is usually very awkward for handlocks, right? If you're going first, you would tap in turn 3. And if you're going second, you would coin like an Azdrake or even the Hellfire in turn 3. So 3 drops are not super prevalent. That's why we only see like the uh, Big Game Hunter being the only other 3 drop. But uh, Life Coach here has to decide whether he wants to um, you know, Hellfire and just clear this board with 7 power. Or be a little bit more greedy and go for like, you know, a Void Caller or a Drake. Uh, uh, I would be kind of shocked if he went for the Void Caller because he does not have a Molten Giant in his hand. If, if Life Coach had a Molten Giant, he might have just played the Void Caller instead because he would have been that worried about taking the extra damage from those minions that were already on the board. Yeah, we do see, though, that a, he opts for the Hellfire, decides to play it safe, and can't really fault him. That was a lot of power on the board that he was going to have to contend with, uh, with no Molten Giant, so uh, decides to play it safe. And Kranich is going to play an Imp Gang boss, it looks like, and actually opt to play the Abusive Sergeant just to put more on the board. Ama is very much indicative of what you said, that kind of all-in approach. Right. Oh, because oh, that mistake is a tech card that does not work in this uh, matchup. No, but Gul'dan has no secret. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> But uh, playing the Abusive actually means that Life Coach can play a 4-drop and Mortal Coil, so it's actually the perfect timing to drop the 2-1. Um, dropping a turn 5 means that he can, Life Coach can actually clear and actually develop a 4-drop, so that was good. Um, 
Here you can decide between a Drake or a Voicaller, and we see Kranich does have the Owl. Um, not the worst of things if Life Coach gets his uh, one of his four drops uh, silenced because he would prefer his taunts to stay intact, or even the Malganus to have his effect. So, so um, I guess uh, it's just a preference right now whether he wants a bit more bored or wants a bit more sticky minion. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to say no to the Void Caller though. With the Malganus, they're ready and waiting. And uh, Void Caller is also a tiny bit uh, less vulnerable, <laughs> sorry, less weak to, uh, to the silence effect. Sure, but you don't really expect your opponent to have silence. And Drake does contest the in game boss good enough that Life Coach is going to choose this option. So of all yep. the options he had, uh, this this one feels the least defensive. It puts something on the board. He can taunt it up next turn, but wow. double power overwhelming. <laughs> I don't think is that enough just yet. Not enough yet. yet, but, but that's, that's a lot, a lot of, damage. of damage. Yeah, if he... <laughs> it's like wow. the same thing. There's so much damage right now. And this is such a pivotal turn for Kranich. He has to make the read whether he expects Molten Giants or not. Obviously, he can't take out the Twilight Drake without using a power overwhelming, which he wants to keep to finish the game. Mm -hmm. Well, um, you can also silence. Does, the thing yeah, is, you do want to silence and kill off the Drake because it's going to gain taunt anyways. You go like, oh, maybe I'll just silence oh, it when it gains taunt. But it's a minion. Life, uh, Life Coach plays Sunfear and Argus, so you might as well just remove it right now. Uh, the fight with the egg right now doesn't really put too much power on the board. So I guess the only other thing Kranich is thinking about is whether to hit the face with uh, these two creatures and right. uh, reduce the life, uh, the hand loss life to very low. It's very, very hard because most of the would be, you know, close to cheap and close to free. So he's gonna trade in that Abusive Sergeant in the Twilight Drake. And then the Imp Gang boss, again, he's, he's given that consideration. Yep. Has to think about those Molten Giants. What if Mo Life Coach has a Molten Giant right now? Would it be better not to attack? Yeah, it's such a, such a tense moment when you're playing in this matchup. Really, when you're playing any more aggressive deck against Handlock, you just kind of sit there soul searching. Does he have those Molten Giants? Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we know Life Coach doesn't, so uh, Life Coach in a little bit of a scary spot now. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks to Kranich's attack, uh, he's actually one damage off lethal uh, next turn, uh, assuming that Life Coach doesn't do anything, you know, so defensive. So, like, something like a Direwolf Alpha or like a Knife Juggler, yep. you know, could end the game. Second abusive, even, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or Doom God, because with the power of overwhelming, playing it first, that would be exactly 13. I, I completely mm -hmm. agree with the decision from Kranich to attack here. Even though Molten Giant and, uh, and Sun Fury would be kind of a problem. He does set up the lethal this way. So many Every damage matters. So the only way, uh, only ways he can get down taunt at this point uh, would be to play Iron Beak Owl as well as Earth and Ring Farseer. Uh, he could taunt either of those. But the Void Collar costs just one mana too much to be able to combo with a taunt, which obviously he would really like to do here yeah. with uh, with Malganus sitting in hand. Oh! oh wow. God. But because of the low tap effect, Kranich won't be able to play the power of overwhelming with the Doom God. Yeah, that's a. Uh, that's kind of insane. Life Coach probably doesn't even realize he just saved himself from uh, yeah. from dying to to all kinds of bad yeah. demon stuff. Kind of just still looking at a very, very good position here since yeah. Life Coach doesn't have those Molten Giants to swing the board uh, back in his that favor. Is so much damage. With seven mana next turn, Kranich can go double power overwhelming into Doom God for, for <laughs> 13 damage directly wow, and from his hand. He actually decides not to attack there. Doesn't yeah. want to give the free Molten Giants or the one mana Molten Giants. And it seems like the um, free Molten Giants is what Kranich is going to lose to right now, right? He already used his, uh, his Owl, and the only way to get back the toss is to go to do the hard way, which is smashing all your minions to it and, you know, all of them dying. So, um, I, I like that play. If Here, you're, uh, life, life Coach is really, really in an awkward position, right? You have six mana. Um, you could taunt up the Void Caller and the uh, Lothab. Hopefully grab the Malganus out and that's an extra taunt, perhaps. Um, the other choices... From the void. There isn't that much, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> All right. This gives you reasonable walls and Go chance of getting Malganus. That is ambitious. Okay. Well, let's look at his hand here. Well, yeah, Kranich has 13 damage out of his hand. Um, don't think you can spread that out correctly. Since the no. uh, Lothap has five health and the Void Caller has four health, even even if the second Void Caller comes out of the first Void Caller, it would not be lethal for Kranich just yet, because he has to deal four so damage to Void Caller, five to the Lothap. So Life Coach is kind of at uh, at 22 right now. So that's the amount of damage that Kranich would have to deal. Uh, this seems to be the swing turn that Life Coach is looking for, and once again, Kranich needs to go do these taunts the hard way. Start with the Implosion. Oh, Ooh, only rolls of two. That's that's really bad for him. If, even if he got just a three, he could have traded the owl for it. But that uh, 
the, the, the difference between rolling a 3 and a 4 wasn't that huge, but rolling a 2, very bad. Yeah, so unfortunately in this situation now, he's got to kind of scramble a little bit. Yeah. This is kind of uh, walking away a bit from the win condition he wanted. So now he's got to decide, probably play down something like the egg there. Oh, yeah. so painful, just because of that load of having to trade in the in gang boss in addition to the owl. Yeah, it also felt like that life coach went for the face last turn. And it's putting a lot of pressure on Kranich, and Kranich might be thinking, oh, I might be di dead to like a dock bomb or something. Oh, oh, Doom guard off the top, that's not enough damage. But it's close. Very, it's very three close. damage off. Wow. Mm. So... Yeah. Unfortunately, if he tapped anyway, looking for like a dark it, bomb, no. he wouldn't be able to find it. Although, now that I think about it, last time we saw this list, I don't know if we actually saw any dark bombs. Oh, wow. Yeah, really? I mean, he has to cut something to run Earthen Ring Farseer. That's true. Maybe uh, just one. Right. And uh, yeah, maybe cut, cutting one Mortal Coil seems uh, valid as well. The Mortal Coil is a very strong card yeah. against a lot of aggro matchups. Yeah, it helps a lot to deal with with uh, Belchers also when you have a Twilight Trick out, oh, getting yeah, that extra true. damage. Well, Life Coach here um, could do something cute with the demons. You know, play some demons, sacrifice your Void Caller to put another demon perhaps. But uh, once again, 7 mana is not really what you're looking for. Uh, a 4 and a 3 drop would be most efficient. Uh, silencing the egg could be good too. If he wants to play the Doom Guard. It's interesting to see what he decides to go from here. He is looking to heal his own Void Caller. Yep. Oh, and then oh, plays his other Void Caller so that the Doom Guard and the Morganis has a bigger chance. Well, has the only chance. I believe to that's come actually out. lethal for Kranich here. If if uh, Life Coach gets the Doom card from that, because with the power of Evolving on the Nerubian Egg, mm -hmm. dealing four to that, he has four extra on the board, nine yeah. in his hand. So this is a 50 50 moment right here. Does he get the Mulligan? Oh! oh, oh that card. is not the right one, and Life Coach does, is not happy about that. Yeah. <laughs> Life Coach is. You had one job, Void Collar. Come on. <laughs> Team effort. Like, that is going to be yeah. game. Kranich just snatches it away. Wow. And to be fair, like that one looked like it was kind of getting away from Kranich once those taunts came down. The implosion rolled for two. But Life Coach did draw some uh, weak other cards there. Getting that Gezan Mystic, for example, it didn't really help that much. Yeah, at the end of the day, it seems like that uh, 13 damage burst from a zoo is a lot, you know? Zoo yeah. can burst your opponent. Sure That's is. what it's made to do. Uh, and the power warming also made it so that the trading uh, with the taunt was very, very efficient. And uh, yeah, Kranich gets his zoo out of the way. Um, it, is a it was a really strong deck against Life Coach's lineup anyways, but it's always good to have the first win. Oh yeah, and that, that was an important one for Life Coach. Now with his handlock, it's only going to get more difficult than that if that oh, was. Yeah. So uh, even though it's only 1-0 for Kranich, I think Life Coach is, uh, is in a lot of trouble right now. Right, so Kranich obviously takes a 1-0 lead in the series and uh, We've talked to Kranich a little bit about the fact he's the only player returning to BlizzCon and, and how confident that makes him.
Welcome back. There we saw life coach. Uh, quite nervous. I, not happy about that at all. I mean, there's a lot on the line. Can't blame him. Yeah, it seems like that match did get stolen away from him. So we'll have to see if he has gets his confidence back in the second match and hopefully does it. Yeah, life coach very experienced player. He, it's not the first time he's in a spot like this. And I'm sure that mentally he can uh, reset that thing and just like focus on the next game and not worry too much about what just happened. Yeah, that's, that's, that's very true. So... Uh, we have a special guest right now with us. Welcome to the table. Thanks. I, I just want to point out real quick. Live coach has to kind of look at that not as a not as a mistake, but as a happy accident kind of game. And he's going to get right back in for game two. I believe in live coach. Okay. Glad to be joining you guys. Obviously, I'm a big fan of streams. As I said last night, big fan <laughs> of streams. Love streams. It's uh, very nice for you to take the time um, out of your very very busy day and uh, come join us to cast a game of Hearthstone. I just I've been so popular on Twitch lately. And I love Hearthstone so much. I just Figured I'd come on out and cast some Hearthstone with you guys. Mm. Rob had to go to the bathroom anyway, so it seemed like a good time. <laughs> no mistakes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> it, it was a very fun time. Yeah. I agree. Who Hearthstone do you think World is going to win, Kranich or Life Coach? Oh, I, tough to say. Life Coach, very, very calm individual. Very placid, very, very nice guy. I really like Life Coach, but that Kranich is, is a cute gamer boy. Really like him too. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of happy surprises coming. No mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it seems like the game has started, which uh, saves us some <laughs> some time here looking at each other. Um, life coaches, life coaches, Kranich. Um, he's gonna play against. Um, uh huh. We, we see actually in Kranich's hands, he's got a couple little trees there. And I really like oh. those little trees. I, oh, I kind of hope he keeps them. Uh, that board's gonna look a lot nicer with those trees on them. Why? Why is it that trees are, you know, so interesting? Uh, they're just very happy. You know, you look at a tree; it's, it's hard to be mad. Mm. You get very excited about trees. All right. Well, um, life coach definitely is not a big fan of trees. and is looking to crush Kranich's druid here with his handlock. It's not gonna be a good matchup, um, but um, this hand is also not looking too good. Yeah. For life coach. Well, both players with uh, <laughs> really bad hands. No, no mana cards for Kranich right now. He's really looking for either wild growth or a Darnus's aspirant. Innovate would also help. Life coach with no play for turn four right now. It's really, really slow hands for both of them. Very non aggressive, nice and peaceful. Uh, they don't really look like they want to fight each other. A lot of high mana cards, and don't worry about it later right now. Yeah, we can yeah. see that Kranish doesn't even have a wild growth or an innovate, so it's oh. going to be looking like a hero power into a hero power, which yeah, is very, very bad. <laughs> Awful hand. <from laughs> yeah, but then Life coach, at the other hand, also doesn't have any four drops, so um, it seems like both players are fishing for those key cards. Everyone yeah, wants to find that wild growth. It's such a pretty card. Very, very close it, to nature. It does seem like it's a painting done by you. Oh, wow, that's. I appreciate the compliment, but I'm not of that skill level yet. Whoa. <laughs> All right, well, there there's, the, there's the wild card. <laughs> I'm, I'm really glad he could get that. That makes me very happy. All nice, right. nice, happy surprise. All right. Uh, Kranich still needs to look for a five drop, though. Um, not the best curve. And meanwhile, at Life Coach's hand, well, at least he can uh, play an Ancient Watcher. Coining a Void Collar isn't the best option here, since yeah. he doesn't have enough four drop to follow up. No right? demon in his hand right now, so that mm -hmm. would be kind of surprising. If he decided to go, go with that, he might be trying to bait out uh, a silence from Kranich in that case, because Kranich doesn't know life coach doesn't have any demons. Yeah, the bluffing strategy always works with Void Collar. Sometimes the longer you think in ladder, the more they think that, oh, um, they don't have it, right? right? But life coach always pays so, so that you know bluff is all out of the way. Void color would be a nice addition to the board, though. We see a nice magenta so hued color demon there. A little, a little bit of darker orange red. Really mm. gonna, really gonna improve this otherwise kind of bland canvas we've got going on the board right now. No minions. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. Well, <laughs> I, I, in that case, what is the uh, most beautiful class based on their, um, you know, decks and colors? I, I think that's a very straightforward answer, Amos. It's obviously Druid. He's already got trees in his hand. He's got another oh, one. Oh, so okay. many trees for Druid. You got Ancient of War, Ancient of Lore. Force and nature. I walked right into that one, I think. A little oh. bit. You kind of set yourself up there for it, friend. Life Coach actually just going to coin out the Void Caller in here. Oh, wow. That's a very decent uh, five drop by Kranich. Uh, we know that the best play by him right now would be to charge and kill the Void Caller off, right? Yeah, but he yeah. doesn't know. That I would be shocked if he actually decided to go with that play. The manly play. Yeah. You would do that, right, Savish? Like oh, yeah. Just to risk it. Yeah, there's no demon, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, if you crown it, there's two options really. Either the Keeper of the Crow for the Silence if you're worried about Doom cards and and that kind of stuff, or he could just go with Druid of the Cloth on, which we know would work Where out better in this situation. Does go for the safe play. Can't yep. blame him. 
it's hard to know. It's hard to know what's behind that void collar. And you can't really judge a painting until it's finished. And this this warlock uh, hand clearly has a lot of stuff to be yet to be seen. Mm -hmm. yep. Lots of surprises. Happy surprises, though. All right. <laughs> Speaking of surprises, uh, life coach, Kazan Mystic comes in again and yeah, uh, doesn't get any value once again. Again, <laughs> like four mana, four uses, three. Yeah. You know, uh, so you can actually decide between you know taunting up the ancient watcher, perhaps. Uh, playing a 4 mana 4 3 seems pretty bad, but not the worst yeah. option right now. I don't think you go with the Kazan. You gotta protect the Void Caller. If he chooses to play the Kazan and not attack, it's fairly obvious that there's no I demon, because otherwise he would have just uh, pulled it out with the Void Caller. Life Coach really wants to tap, but if he does choose to tap, he cannot protect the Void Caller. So he needs to make a decision here between uh, keeping the Void Caller or. Or Life Tapping. Yeah, I guess I would prefer the uh, Taunting of the Ancient Watcher here. It does make your. Other turns quite hard uh, since you use a lot of uh, small mana minions. But I mean, come on, like Lothab into Emperor into Dr. Broom seems like a pretty good curve. Yep, and uh, he does go with that. Also, don't think of the Void Caller. I'm kind of a bit surprised that he chose to go with that. He, maybe he wants to hide the fact that uh, there is no demon waiting on the other side. You guys brought up an interesting point. That Kazan Mystic, uh, you know, great card in its own right, does a lot of powerful stuff in the right scenario, but. You know, it's all about bringing the right tools when you're making your masterpiece. And okay. uh, when uh, when Life Coach looks down at his color palette, you know, he sees a lot of nice demons and silences. And Doctor Boom's always a great one to have too. Very powerful color, but Kazan Mystics maybe not the tool for this job. Not <laughs> for this game especially, but maybe for another game it'll bring um, you know more clarity what? to the to the board. What do you think he's looking to use that tool on, Amaz? Uh, perhaps uh, Kranich's Hunter, which uh, Kranich's has, but not this one. No. So we'll, we'll have to save the surprise for later. <laughs> yeah, okay. Granite's here with six mana. No There's a few options. <laughs> it seems like the silence would be kind of the obvious one, the white color. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, going for the ancient watcher kill, that can never feel good. If you're going to, you know, remove a two drop just by killing of the Drew of the Claw. That effectively is like a bigger um, dark bomb, right? Very nice for Kranich, or very nice for Life Coach. Kranich, you know, obviously, uh, doesn't understand. Life Coach had no demons at the time. Yeah. That Void Caller was a big old bluff, big old lie. Yeah, Life Coach uh, pretty <laughs> proud of himself. I'm, I'm assuming that uh, he did get the Void Caller to get silenced and get valued that way. And now turn five, pretty easy look up here. Yep. Um, the trading is also pretty nice so with the Sun Fury against the Druid the Claw. Yeah, definitely a lot. Nothing else really makes any sense. If he went for the life, that it's possible that he had no minion to play at all. It's easy to look at that uh, Keeper of the Grove and think that maybe Kranich ruined it a little bit, but it's he didn't ruin it. Uh, it was just he's playing to what he thought might be there, and that's that's sometimes something you got to do in these high-level tournaments. Absolutely. There you go. Uh, Kranich actually played the uh, top deck uh, Ancient of Lore immediately, which uh, if Life Coach is uh, just looking at uh, what Kranich is doing might come to the conclusion that he only has one Ancient of Lore. You know, sometimes these edges help the overall match, right? You just want to pick those small advantages when you can. Yep. And uh, here, six mana available. So Mountain Giant and Emperor Thoris are both seem kind of uh, like decent plays. You'd expect him to trade low that Yeah, he does go for it. Really okay. sad. Really sad life coach got rid of that tree. Oh. That tree was making the board look a lot nicer. Now it's gone. Uh, hope but life Lothab is not a tree. Oh, I mean, okay. I, ancient I, I of, ancient of Lore is a tree. Okay, I get what you mean. Hmm. <laughs> uh, Granite's with uh, it's quite a few tools here. Just choose whatever he wants. Yeah. Out of those. There's a, a lot of good plays. Uh, I think what Granite's just thinking about is uh, the possibility mm. of double combo, uh, since this innovator is in the hand. So Granite's is just looking to stabilize the board and not, not get the uh, handlock out of hand. So to say. Out of hand. That was delightful. <laughs> I like that. So very, happy. Very so happy, by the way, that Cranch is playing Drew. Oh, know? man. And uh, yeah, just uh, maintain board pressure, hmm. uh, just clear the board, <laughs> get a 22 damage combo yeah. out to finish the game, perhaps. All That'd right. be a lot of damage. There's a lot of trees. Starts with a Wrath for one, picks up the Emperor, is not his own. Is there a way for him to get the Emperor out right now and deal with the. With the uh, Emperor from Life yeah, Coach's side. Yeah, not exactly right now, it seems like. So it's just gonna clear the board once again. Emperor can just come down next turn, that's perfectly fine. It's true, as well. it's going to be quite good. He could even go for the second lore before playing the Emperor to get even more value with that's it. That's true. But reducing down double Savage Roar is already like a huge deal. Oh, yeah. Ooh, Absolutely. 
Yeah, darn ass Tasmin comes down. She is riding a cat. That's very nice. A lot of, a lot of cats like those. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's gonna give her an extra mana crystal too. Uh, yeah, on turn eight, not really too crazy, but at least establishes the minion, I guess. And of course, Crash looking to Emperor the uh, two Savage Roars. Doesn't seem like he needs to innovate, so he just goes ahead and plays a little bit more board. So Set up for the Emperor and Shredder case. next turn, and then see where to go from there. Yep. Life Coach, a uh, handful of minions is going to be... It's going to be a quite a uh, difficult task to respond to Kranish's board right now. I guess Dr. Boom is the best option here, just to, you know, try and take back the board. Most likely he will not life tap here, considering that uh, with those two minions on the board, Kranish, with a, with a Force of Nature Savage Roar, mm. would, be the, would be threatening 22 damage. Obviously, uh, the Druid here looks to do its painting all in one turn. Get all that damage and just... Finish up right then and there, whereas Life Coach would like to take this a little bit longer, kind of take his time on his work, and Druid's not really going to let him have it. Nope. There's the guess on. Oh. Effectively, uh, uh, pilot less Shredder in this matchup. <laughs> that's, that's a good Because most Shredders are piloted. I like it. I like it. And there's the force of nature for Kranich. And yeah, once again, Emperor is going to uh, be super effective here in uh, making Kranich's hand be able to play double combo right from his hand. And I really can't see any other play. And of course, you can back that up with Shredder as well. Maybe it's a little bit weak to Hellfire or Shadow Flame, but um, yeah, just establish, you know, the minions and just go for the win next turn. I don't think he's too worried about the, those right now. Mm -hmm. so there needs to be the AOE and some ridiculously strong taunts. Yeah. And because Life Coach is at her life total of 24, Kranich doesn't even have to worry about any Molten Giants coming down on the board. Right. Oh, Sun Fury Protector, very important draw. But is it going to be enough? Uh, usually it is, because some people protected even taunting a one health creature, like a Boombot perhaps, mm. will soak a lot of damage, right? It'll soak perhaps four damage from uh, the hero attacking from the double Savage Roars. So taunts actually mess up the Force of Nature really, really badly. Yep. Taking his time, looking like he's in pain. <laughs> well, the only thing he can really do to get rid of that Emperor Thorsan has put down the Doom Guard. He looks so angry. That Doom Guard is yelling. He's really gonna ruin the vibe of this whole game. Mm. Just coming down, shamming and shouting. Okay. So Owl Doom God Sunfear. Owl Sunfear Protector Doom God would let him get a full clear here, but he would discard two cards, and one of those could be the Doctor Boom. So would you want to play Doom God first, and perhaps discard one of the Owls? It's an interesting. It's thought. very risky, and uh, Life Coach. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thinking his brains out here. He's gonna go for the Doctor Boom, but oh, that means that he will not play the taunt. And that is it. Yeah, that's Kranich, going. That's a that's a lot of damage. Twenty-two from the hand and nine from the Emperor. Oh my God! Oh, oh yeah. Power. Might so as well throw in the interface. Twenty-three for the from the hand and nine on body. Thirty-two damage for. Uh, the trees are celebrating. Right They're just. They're doing a lot of damage, the big numbers, they're happy, they're dancing, they're charging. I really, yeah, I really like, what, I like what Kranich has done. These are happy trees. Alright, well of course, uh, once you join the desk, the Force of Nature does pick up a win here. And uh, congratulations goes to Kranich. He's up 2-0. Yep. Yep. Only has his Hunter left, left now. And uh, Life Coach with his hand look still. <laughs> oh man. It's going to be rough. It's doable though, with the right cards. Yeah. It's not necessarily that Life Coach read the meta wrong, it's just that he's facing an opponent that's uh, built a lineup very, very strong against control decks. And the Handlock is one of those decks where, you know, you have to wrap up early on and play these big creatures later on. And yeah, kind of just Zulok did it really well, and the Druid was a lot of pressure. And um, Life Coach needs to win three straight now, which is going to be really hard. Yeah. The, I wonder if it's like... Thank you, Savish. Thank you, Savish. Uh, obviously, we saw a great game there. Just a ton of fun. I'm super happy I got to cast this Hearthstone match. We used Kranich, who's a lovely palette of nature and, and trees, and it ultimately proved to win him the game, so he's got a commanding lead in the series. I've got to go right now. I've got more paintings to do, but thank you for having me. It's been a lot of fun, and bye bye It's nice having you with us. Yeah, what a nice and inspiring <laughs> visit from the man himself. Sure was. Yeah, we're going to miss him, right? Absolutely. Are you going to miss him? I am.
but let's get back into the match. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, so, um, so you, you, said, you think Carnage is just like a big, big favorite, right? Uh, what Absolutely. can Life Coach do? I mean, obviously you want momentum to be back on your side first, so you want to go with the best class. So uh, if you were a Life Coach, what would you pick here? I would probably... Well, all of these are not very good against it, but maybe with the Warrior. Okay. So there's a lot of tools in that they can deal with, uh, with the early minions from Grandis, with those weapons, for example. That, that handlock, might want to wait for a little bit later with it. Uh, we didn't even see any Dark Bombs, right? Yeah, we didn't, didn't see a see single it. Dark Bomb, and that's very important early yeah, on against such, the Hunter. It's such a reactive card, and a couple of the Doom Guard can actually burst your opponent down from, you know, very high amounts of health that perhaps you expect Handlock not to make from, you know, just very rampy cards, like Giants and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, we do know that his uh, Warrior deck is a very, very control heavy, right? Just it because True Heart might get the health lead he, ha uh, he needs to beat a Hunter. Yeah. Early on, that's that's where the troubles might come. If the hunter has a nice curve, goes one, two, three, four, uh, it can be uh, the, the early damage just might be too much, and uh, those slow, expensive legendary minions might be too late. Yeah, playing on curve is definitely a very, very important thing to do. And um, hey, Rob, you decided to um, join us back. Yeah, where, where were you? I actually ended up getting lunch. Uh, I saw Bob though, and all. Seems like we took good care of you guys. So, yeah. I'm super glad. And, uh, looks like we're getting right into game three here. So, Kranich up 2 0 on Life Coach, and uh, mid range Hunter versus uh, Control Warrior. Yeah. Certainly very a fair. matchup that, you know, over time we've seen really kind of go to the Control Warrior. But. Or, sorry, to the mid-range Hunter, but uh, I think the Control Warrior has a pretty good uh, chance here. Yeah, it's definitely a matchup of the ages. Uh, back when Control Warrior was super prevalent, people were like, oh, let's just bring Savannah High Main to beat the Warriors, right? So, really what Life Coach is going to uh, do in this match is to figure a way to um, kill the Savannah High Main, the first one, because you don't expect the second one, and then just, you know, win from there. Yep. He's got a good early curve for it, too. Yeah, not bad at all. Dust up with that web spinner. The mid-range hunter very low on one drops, but uh, he does get it here. Definitely helps. And for live coach, uh, kind of the name of the game at least for this turn, we'll probably at some point end up being uh, armor and pass. Yep. But uh, live coach is going to take his time, figure out what he wants to do. Kranich's hand is just full of spiders, uh, which feels awkward to say, but there they are. Happy Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Halloween. It's what spiders. A uh, very spooky hand, even. Yeah. Spooky spiders. It's and also the lines. tavern brawl, right? Yeah. Very thematic. Uh, Kranich, uh, you know, like some others, uh, big role player. So. Oh, you're calling Kranich a role player now. I am. I'm calling him out. Mm, okay. Yeah. Well, Kranich is going to show you and he's going to win this game and go move on to BlizzCon. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, Life Coach, you know, for him, this was a chance to, to kind of get a little bit of revenge, but Kranich so far is, uh, is doing work. Yep. You see here, Life Coach uh, has that Acolyte of Pain he can put down. He could also play down the big game hunter if he wanted to, but with those one attack minions, it's kind of too tempting to just draw all those cards. Yep. Yeah, you definitely want to go for the Acolyte here. He knows that uh, Kranich does have a Dr. Boom in his deck as well, so the holding on to that big game hunter for later on is very valuable. Eagle Hornbow, great counter to Acolyte of Pain. Gonna ensure that it basically ends up just being a cycled card, and uh, he's gonna be able to continue pushing aggression and might just save that coin. Uh, yeah, probably just save that coin for the high main. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, it's very important for Life Coach to establish this Fire War Axe since he's going to play a Belcher next turn. Uh, he wouldn't have any answers for perhaps a Pious Strider from Kranich or even what he has right now, a Knife Juggler plus a Haunted Creeper. Uh, if he decides to cycle for more cards, he might get punished a little bit. Kranich, uh, Kranich being able to get to that turn 5 Savannah High Main will be huge for him. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, Life Coach, uh, right around, as you pointed out, turn 5 here, he's going to have the Sludge Belcher. He has another Sludge Belcher. He could even look at using something like Shield Block, uh, Shield Slam to get rid of the initial body of the Savannah High Main. So Life Coach is actually in a pretty reasonable spot here, I think. Yeah. yeah. It's not looking bad at all. Uh, has those tools. Shield Block, Shield Slam, easy way to deal with the High Main. Equipping the weapon here, considering whether or not he should hit something with it. It's actually a tough call, because <laughs> It doesn't accomplish all that much to kill either one of those minions. Yeah, that's true. No, you're I guess only killing one, so the Houndmaster could come down. Yeah, so. in any case. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I might just armor up and pass. It goes for the Haunted Creeper. Yep, this decides that the Haunted Creeper, if it gets Houndmastered, it will turn into a 4 of creature, whereas the West Spinner will turn into a 3 of creature, which still dies to the axe. Yeah, Makes a sense. Really important consideration. So this is now the the animal companion draw. I feel like maybe complicates this turn a little bit. You probably still keep the coin for the high main, but there is a world where if you're really looking to put on the pressure, you could knife juggler coin animal companion. 
Uh, you know, even Leoc would be really solid here. <laughs> Humper, uh, obviously, always appreciated in situations where you're trying to uh, push the board and mm -hmm. with the fiery war axe uh, equipped maybe even misha's not all that bad so yeah really he there's any scenario where anything he gets off this animal companion is super useful yep. yep. and uh, kranish agrees misha. with you and yep. gets a misha perfect yep. and he uh he holds on to the coin so he's not putting down as much pressure into the board but it's also important to know he's going into the brawl turn that's true um Luckily for Kranich, this isn't a, a board that Life Coach really wants to brawl. I mean, if he really has no answers, he will use a brawl and then Kranich. I think he will be pretty happy about it, right? Dr. Broom sure. is a card that's pretty weak to brawl in general. So now Life Coach without a whirlwind effect. Uh, this is a bit tricky for him. Uh, perhaps a Belcher uh, could stall a little bit. Yep, with the double Belcher in his hand, uh, it makes a lot of sense to get one of those played right now. Even though it's not that perfect against uh, Kranich's board. It might not be the play he ultimately goes with here, but you could shield box, shield slam, get rid of the Misha, swing into what the now? web spinner. You take all the beasts off the board. Obviously, you're not developing that Sludge Belcher, which is very important for keeping the, the damage away. But that Sludge Belcher, if it comes down and it just gets silenced, uh, Kranich is suddenly pushing a fair bit of damage. So even though he has a Sludge Belcher to follow up, it's, it's also a question of kind of can he stay, uh, I guess, afloat in the tempo. No one does that. Yeah, yeah he, and does he goes for the forward. shield slam. And with this play, I would imagine that he's going to swing at the web somehow. But he might not, because uh, he might not have the extra mana to equip the second action next turn. So he wants to keep it for a potential shredder or something along Ooh, those oh, lines. Oh, speaking of which, the silence does come yeah, in hand there it is. for Kranich. And uh, yeah, just coin high me. This is the turn you're waiting for to yep. do exactly that. It would be best case scenario, obviously, Kranich draws a second high main. Yeah. Next turn, and just high main, high main, Dr. Boom. But one high main is enough because the high main rule states that if you play a high main when your opponent has no board and it connects to the face at least one time, you win the game. Is that is that an established rule? That is an established rule. That. Yep. That's uh I believe it though, based yeah. on my experience. One of my hundred established rules that wow. seem to work every time. Uh if you would publish those, <laughs> I would love to read them. Oh. <laughs> alright, alright. Uh yeah, normally in my hundred decks there is no span of high main, so I'm actually not super sure how how it works. No high mains in your hundred decks? Uh, Just face. Oh, yeah, it no. doesn't have charge, so doesn't have charge either. No, Savannah Hyman. No, but I'm saying Savannah Hyman doesn't have charge, so it's not really. Oh, so oh. It's, it's not your kind of hunter deck. No, not my kind of hunter deck. Yeah, the scum, the scumbag hunter. Oh. Uh, wow, really aggressive. <laughs> I prefer to think, uh, you know, a busy man. Things okay. to do. Uh, you know, sometimes I want to get in a game while I'm you know, drinking my coffee, and uh, for those games, I need to go fast. That's why I need charge minions. Uh, Life Coach, not going to go fast here. He's going to get the Sludge Belcher down. Doesn't have an option, really. Yeah, that's a, that's a tricky turn for him. And Ooh, with wow. the kill command off the top, this is going to represent a lot of damage very quickly. Yeah, this is getting so problematic for Life Coach. He didn't have a good way to deal with that high main, and uh, the board is only going to get worse and worse. We see Jeskar Trueheart in Life Coach's hand, which a lot of times can be the decider as far as uh, stalling out the match, but right now he's facing down so much damage. Yep. Yeah, where does he have find the time to play the Justicar? Right. Well, Life Coach really just needs a brawl to, um, you know, stabilize the board, hopefully come back from the game with the Justicar. But uh, Kranish's hand is looking really, really good. Dr. Broom next turn with a kill command to follow up later on. And he's also going to draw a card before that happens, right? Perhaps like uh, another kill command would be pretty crazy. I don't really see a way for Life Coach to turn this around unless he draws a brawl. Without a brawl, a board like this is almost impossible to clear. I think he was there. So he was searching to see if he could get the uh, the knife juggle to hit the sludge belcher before he silenced it. This yep. is still good. There's nothing on the board, and as you said, unless he finds a brawl really soon here. All right, Amaz, it hit the face once. Yep. Let's see if your rule holds. Exactly. Like Kranich really wanted to hit the face, right? But oh, this despite was really late. If uh, yeah. Life Coach actually equipped this to turn four, this board might not have looked like this. Do a little bit of math here and see if there's a world. I think he he can go for some kind of death spite into into Fire Warax play just to get the world being defect off. He has one extra for the execute as well, but is it enough? This is a. Uh, it's important to note. Life Coach has two executes in hand, but they kind of just aren't super effective here. There's so many minions on the board with one health. Uh, Savannah Hyman will ultimately make two. Uh, hyenas, and with the knife jogger on board, it's even worse. So right, you have to get rid exactly. of that first. Uh, but right now, uh, Life Coach has to solve the problem in front of him. The only whirlwind effect is from breaking his own despite. So possible yeah. play might be just equip the despite, you know, perhaps swing with it, and then uh, get the fire war axe to <laughs> kind of override it for the whirlwind yeah, effect. Has to do it. It's not that great, but I think he has to go for it. Yeah. You still have mana left over to execute the Savannah Hyman. So. Yep. 
not that bad, judging yeah. from the situation. No. Yeah, wasting the dead spot in some way. And uh, seems like he's going to go for something else. Probably the Belcher. Okay. Belcher, uh, Belcher always feels safe to play. You're like, come on, save me, Belcher. Save me. Well, it will, it will save him, it looks like, for this turn. Yeah, it's, uh, and now Kranich has uh, two options, right? Uh, Dr. Broom for seven, or we can do the Oasis plus Kill Command for seven as well. well he's got to actually get rid of some minions on the board if he wants to get full value from the Boom Boss. That's true. So he, he might just go along with the Kill Command and uh, Savannah Jaime rule uh, Life Coach's face again. Yeah, that's Savannah Jaime there for third turn already, and still uh, at full health. So when Jaime, when Jaime is survives that long, if you're the Hunter the, uh, Prey, you know you're doing good. The 2015 debut of Oasis Snapjaw, is it? No. No, nope. not yet. Oh. Please around the brawl a little bit. Granich knows that Life Coach doesn't have it, but oh. Life Coach could have drawn it from the top. Yeah, I'm not seeing a way out of this one for uh, for Life Coach. Uh, he might be roping for the last time. <laughs> I mean, for, for this, this game, tournament. obviously. That is brutal. Obviously. That is absolutely. No, uh, to be honest, here he can uh, despite the um, creeper, right? Replace it with another weapon, execute the Savan Hyman, and he'll be down at one health. Wow. And eight hey, Kranich doesn't have one damage. I mean, where would he find it? Uh, he can't find it for Unleash <laughs> the Hounds. No, that's not going to do it. Yeah. Um, Unleash no good for now. Unleash no good. So maybe. Life coach top decks in Alex Straza, maybe. maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, dark situation for life coach, but you just have to try to stay alive for now. Mm -hmm. See what you can find. It's really yeah. the only way to stay alive. And the one plus side I see for this uh, for life coach is that uh, Kranich is not running that that charge heavy hunter, so there is a chance he just draws like a second web spinner or something. Okay. Well, life coach doesn't even want to take that one damage from the hunter creeper. Wow. Uh, goes ahead and replaces the weapon like this. Executes the um, Savannah Jaime, and now he can actually kill one of the hyenas. Yeah, not a great turn, but he's doing what he can. Down to six HP. Granich needs just two more damage to end the series. Oh, that's wow, not Doctor Boom and Web Spinner too. That uh, what a curve friendly turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to float the mana. <laughs> Golden Doctor Boom, no less. There it is. Oh, Life man. Coach does have a big game hunter, but there's still those Doom Boo bots. And, uh, oh, yes, that's not the card you want to draw right now. And I think that's it. There's actually no way for uh, Life Coach to get of this situation. And I hey, believe so. Yeah, Kanish is going to uh, take the series and advance to BlizzCon. Uh, we'll see just what happens here, but I, I feel like you're right. Side. He's going to see if maybe he can try to float the... Nope. Yeah, just uh, obviously we know here power, pretty solid. But yeah, that's a. Uh, it's gonna do it. That is going to do it for life. Coach. Oh yeah, Kranich breathed a sigh of relief, while um, life coach well seems a little played. bit disappointed and well rightfully played. so. Kranich and life coach explain or uh, exchange very polite, well played. Uh, obviously, they're competitors with a lot of respect for each other, and uh, I like seeing that. I feel like we don't necessarily see that enough in Hearthstone, but you know, Kranich understands that even though he was the Asia Pacific champion. Beating a player of Life Coach's caliber is still something to be super like respectful about, right? Life Coach is an incredibly well-known player. Obviously, 2015, I, I think prior to Ty's being on this kind of tear he's on now, was largely considered the year of Life Coach because of all the things he was winning. So, uh, congrats to Kranich. Great to see. Yeah, great showing from Life Coach still. He made it a long way to get here. Finishing in the uh, a little bit before uh, Blizzcon, gone, but he'll, he'll still be there. He'll still be enjoying the event. Unfortunately, not playing. Yeah, on the other hand, Tice will be representing uh, Life Coach's team, G2, and um, he's going to be cheering for his teammates, so it's not like the end of the world for Life Coach. Yeah. He's, he will still root for his teammate. For yeah, good teammates, thing. and I'm sure that uh, Life Coach will also be helping out Tice as much as he can to maybe try to help Tice become the world champion this year. Mm -hmm. Right, speaking of Tice, he actually was talking earlier on Twitter about the fact that even though he would have to play Life Coach, uh, if Life Coach won, and he felt that Life Coach was favored against his uh, his lineup, he was still rooting for Life Coach because they're very good friends. Mm. Uh, they obviously, for Ty's, he would rather play Life Coach than, than see Life Coach not make it. But maybe Ty is breathing a small sigh of relief that he won't have to take on his friend uh, in the round of eight. Yeah. All right, and uh, we actually have uh, Kranich ready for uh, his second interview of the Hearthstone World Championship. Rachel, take it away. Thanks so much, guys. I am here with Kranich, and Kranich. You, you faced Life Coach twice in this tournament. You did an incredible job in this last round, 3-0. Who is left that you're even a little bit afraid of in this top eight? Oh, uh, well, there are so many strong players who are already in the core finals, but like, um, 
Tice, Tice must be most fearsome player because he will just prepare to revenge his teammate. So, yeah, I mean, like, he'll be the most hard opponent, I guess. Yeah, he might be out for revenge on you after knocking out life coach, but we'll see if he's able to take it. Now, uh, what has been the biggest difference for you between last year playing and this year playing at BlizzCon? Um, well, I think this year is like the like tougher one, I guess. <laughs> I mean, like I had only three match um, this year, but like I'm really, really I'm already really exhausted because of so tough matches and yeah, I mean the competition is real. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think this year, this year is like harder. This year is, uh, it might be harder. You're the one to tell us the difference between the two. But if you're so tired, I'll let you guys go rest. We have more Hearthstone matches coming up next. Please don't go anywhere. Yeah, so as Cranich said, uh, obviously, you know, he has to face down Ty's next. No, uh, no small feat. Ty's uh, has kind of tailored his matchup or his roster to kind of dealing with decks like Cranich's. So uh, for Cranich, it's going to be a few days of kind of studying, hitting the books, trying to figure out what he can do to give himself the edge in this uh, uh, upcoming rest of the Hearthstone World Championship. But a uh, very strong showing from him and very strong showing from the Asia Pacific uh, regions thus far in the Hearthstone World Championship. Yeah, definitely. Ty's is going to be a tough opponent for him. But if he can't get past Ty's, he might even take it all. Okay. All right, uh, we want to take a quick second here to thank our sponsors for helping to make the Hearthstone World Championship possible. Obviously, uh, go take a look at all the stuff they are uh, putting out there. Very good stuff, and uh, we're super happy to have their support. Uh, but before we get into our next match, uh, let's have a quick look at some of the highlights from the last series brought to you by Windows 10 Game DVR. <laughs> 